CIP versus SIP key differences and technical points must be considered. In this video, we'll explore the critical cleaning and sterilization steps used in pharma and food industries. By the end, you'll clearly understand when to apply each process and why they matter. Let's dive right in. Core concepts. Before we go deeper, let's start with the foundation. CIP means clean in place and SIP means sterilize in place. These are automated systems designed to keep equipment clean and sterile without dismantling. Think of them as the guardians of hygiene in modern manufacturing. Clean in place is all about removing residues, soils, and biofilms from tanks, pipes, and valves. It uses program sequences of detergents, rinses, and acids to restore hygiene. The beauty of CIP is that no dismantling is needed, saving huge amounts of time. By the end of the cycle, equipment is ready for the next batch. Now let's move to SIP, sterilize in place. Unlike CIP, this step ensures microbial kill using steam or chemical biocides. The system is held at lethal conditions to achieve a sterile assurance level for septic production. In simple words, CIP cleans but SIP sterilizes. Process Steps Next, let's break down the process flow. Both CIP and SIP have structured sequences that must be followed. Understanding these ensures nothing is skipped. It's like following a recipe for hygiene and sterility. CIP starts with a preerance to remove loose soil, followed by a caustic wash to dissolve proteins and fats. Then comes an intermediate rinse, an acid wash for mineral scale, and a final rinse to balance pH. Finally, sanitizing lowers the bio burden to safe levels. Together, these steps guarantee thorough cleaning every time. The SIP process starts by sealing the system and injecting steam until sterilization temperature is reached everywhere. Then, the lethal hold time is maintained to ensure microbes are destroyed. Afterward, cooling under sterile air and drying prepare the system for safe use. Each step is validated for sterility assurance. Key Differences Now, let's compare the two. CIP focuses on achieving visually clean, low bio burden surfaces, while SIP targets sterile surfaces required for aseptic processes. CIP removes soils, while SIP destroys microorganisms. It's cleaning versus sterilization, two different but connected goals. The goal of CIP is soil removal, making equipment clean and ready for use in food or bulk pharma. SIP, however, aims for sterile assurance levels of 10 to the power of negative 6 needed in injectables or a septic filling. In other words, CIP prepares, while SIP perfects. The two together guarantee safety and compliance. CIP uses water, alkaline, and acid detergents at 50 to 85 degrees Celsius, relying on turbulent flow for cleaning. Monitoring is done through conductivity and pH. SIP, by contrast, uses saturated steam at 121 degrees Celsius for 15 to 30 minutes, monitored with temperature and biological indicators. These parameters make each process reliable and validated. Integration and value. Now, let's look at how CIP and SIP work together. Cleaning must always come before sterilization. They are sequential, not interchangeable. Residual soils can block steam, so effective CIP is a prerequisite for successful SIP. Integration ensures a complete hygiene cycle. First, CIP removes all soils and is validated for cleanliness. Then, SIP achieves sterility by killing microbes. If CIP isn't done well, SIP may fail. That's why both steps are critical in the process chain. Using CIP and SIP offers several benefits. They eliminate manual disassembly, saving time and reducing errors. They reduce cross-contamination between batches and save water and chemicals through recycling systems. Most importantly, they ensure compliance with regulations through validated records. And that wraps up our session on CIP versus SIP essentials. We explored the concepts, process steps, key differences, and benefits of integration. I hope this made the topic simple and practical for you. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.